Today I'm going to demonstrate the partial products method for multiplication. Basically partial products involves using place value to multiply as opposed to the standard way of multiplication. So when we start, we usually start over here in the tens column since that's our biggest place value. And instead of looking at this as a 2, we think of this as 20 since it's in the twos column and that's in the tens column and that's what it represents. So over here I think to myself, what is 20 times and now I need to multiply it both ways. So if I start with the 4, since it's in the tens column, that will be 40. So 20 times 40 equals. So that's what I'm thinking in my head. Um, we can write it down if we need to. Um, so I do my 20 times 40. 2 times 4 is 8. My two zeros, 800. All of this work over here should be able to be done mentally, technically. Um, I shouldn't have to do another multiplication problem on the side. Then I go use my 20 again. This time I'm multiply it times the 3. Since 3 is in the 1's column, it's just uh, 3. So 20 times 3 is what I'm thinking in my head, which gives me 60. And I make sure here to line up all of my columns by place value. Then I move over to my 6, which is in the 1's column, so it is 6. First I have 6 times 4, but it's not 4 since it's in the 10's. Sometimes it's helpful to label the place values. I have 6 times 40. And it doesn't really matter what order we do these in. If these are different, that's fine. 6 times 4 being 24, add a 0, 240. And then finally, I have 6 times 3. As long as everything's lined up, all I have to do now is add everything back together. So I get an 8, 1, and an 11. So 1,118 would be my answer. Now, sometimes it is helpful to do first an estimation. Uh, we have the students do an estimation. So Instead of 43, we would round that to 40 times. And instead of 26, we would round that to 30. So this way, they can get an idea of where their answer should be, which in this case is around 1,200. Once they know their answer's in the thousands, if they get an answer in the thousands or close to that, they know they're correct on that problem. Next, we're going to do a problem with decimal. Now, with decimals, the problem's almost identical as far as our steps we take. The only thing we're going to make sure to do this time is to do our estimate first, because we don't want to have to use the decimal point um, in this situation. So the first thing we're going to do is make an estimate. So 1.3, we round it to the nearest 1, which would simply be 1, and we multiply that times 5. We don't really need to um, round that since these are um, numbers that students can use. 1 times 5 is 5. So I know right away my answer when I'm done is probably going to be in the 1s. So what I can do now is I can forget about the decimal point. And instead of doing 1.3 times 5, I can do 13 times 5. Now, if we use the partial products method, we think of 5 times 10 first, since this is in the tens column, which is 50, and then 5 times 3, which is 15. And I add these back together. Again, we're not concerned about the decimal point until the very end. 0 plus 5, 5 plus 1. Now, if we get an answer 65, and if we go back to our estimate and keep in mind it should be in the ones, we know that we're missing something. We're missing the decimal point in this case. So now I can go back and put my decimal point in to make sure that this is in the ones and not in the tens. So by putting a decimal point right in the middle, I know that my answer 6.5 does make sense. It's around 5 where my estimate was. It, it takes away the um, having to figure out how many decimal places there are, especially when there's multiple decimals or more, de more than one decimal place. This makes it a lot easier. So that's the partial products method for multiplication using both whole no numbers and decimals.